Hey guys, how's it going? So we just had a series of rain here and we've been enjoying that so much in the garden. For us in Southern California, we don't get all that much rain. So when we do, it's so nice to see everything grow so well because we don't have a lot of them that would flood and cause root rot. It just kind of, you know, waters very deeply into the earth and um, just gets everything to sprout, even the weeds and everything else. So usually in the early spring is when we see a lot of the stinging nettles uh, grow here. They grow wild here. After the rain, we see a lot of them come up. And then when we get a little more rain later on, it's, you know, the ground, it's kept, you know, just fertile and, and, and moist enough for them to grow really quickly. So I'm going to be doing some harvest of that today because it is a very nutritious vegetable. It's quite scary to handle at first, but and to even think about eating them, but I'm going to show you a couple of ways of how you do it. Um, this is actually one of the whole food, you know, vitamins you can buy for um, allergies. Uh, it's really helpful for that, and it has a lot of other minerals in there. It's so nutritious. It makes a beautiful tea when I, I dry them, or I can just stir it into like a quick soup or something to eat. I would not suggest eating them raw. I would throw them in the smoothie uh, if I want to eat them raw. I want to make sure to break up all that little fuzzy pokey stuff if I'm going to be eating them raw. But when you cook them, all that stuff goes away. Now I love harvesting my food the day after the rain because the rain just washes all the dirt or the smoke or the smog or whatever things that's on your plants and it helps you clean it up you don't have to do the extra work um, I harvest these things and you know and they are for for me and my, my my family and friends like just for us to enjoy so I don't really care about a little bit of dirt even if they're on the leaves because uh, I don't care about the dirt. I care about what's been sprayed like chemicals on my plants, which we don't do any kind of chemical sprays. Everything is organic or even beyond organic in this garden, so I have nothing to worry about. Uh, and I'm gonna be picking these stingy nettles because you don't want them to be poking on the path when you're walking or trying to pick other foods. Uh, they grow very fast once they start sprouting. They're gonna like grow super quickly, super fast here. Um, and the ones that are exposed to more sun will get more prickly. So the ones that are more tender are actually hidden under the bushes and all that. And they don't sting as hard as the ones in the full sun. I also like to pick them when they're still kind of short, but sometimes, you know, when things get in the way and I, I can't get to picking, then they start growing. They grow so fast. So I'm going to pick those up and the older ones, I'm just going to make a compost tea with it. They have really great um, nitrogen in there. I can feed it back to the plants here. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep the younger plants here. And to get started, be sure you have gloves. Be sure your gloves don't have holes. You do not want them to sting you because your the sting would it's like feels like a bunch of needles stabbing you. And for me, I'm super sensitive and it would last for at least a couple of days or more. So yeah, put good gloves, good thick gloves on. And uh, to dry them, you can either hang a bunch upside down with a string tied and hang upside down in like a, a dry, uh, well circulated room or use a tray. You don't want to trap any humidity. You want them to kind of just air dry in the air dried in the shade. So I'm just gonna have a, a, a shallow like a plate or a, sh or a tray. You can even get like a, a weaved tray. That would be best. I don't have that right now, so I'm just gonna work with what I got. And I'm just gonna be picking some. Oh, and wear long sleeves and long pants. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to get it poked. <laughs> You can either trim these or pull them, pull the whole plant up. And the ones that are in the walkway and all that, I'm just gonna pull the whole plant up. I don't want them to grow back in the path, on the path. Now I've come to this bunch that's actually growing under the shade, so it's going to stay a little more tender and more, uh, I guess, um, faster to cook. Um, I do enjoy the more tender ones, and they are away. The, these are growing away from the pathway. The the walking path so I'm just going to trim them back to get them to grow more bushy and and fuller and just 
so uh, they can grow back instead of just pulling them out. I'm just going to pull it up. Now, because the prickly things are on, you know, on top and on the stem, it kind of grows like a, a cactus, all these spikes. But if you pick like a, a young one on top here, and you see how I'm doing it. And actually I saw this in a documentary a while ago where the chimps were actually picking them to eat and that's how they would eat them. You do need to smash it up really well first. They would like fold the leaves and and then eat it. Mm. It's nice. Good flavor. Let's move on to the next spot. There's two ways to dry the leaves. One is to place a thin layer of these stems on a tray or the second method, which I prefer because it saves space this way, is to hang them. You can hang them on a nail or like right here, I'm just placing them on a hanger, which makes it easier for me to collect them before it gets dark each day. I would bring them inside so they don't get wet throughout the night and then take them outside again during the daytime. I would keep them in the shade you can hang it on anything really, a nail or whatever you got. So just, you know, do what works best for you. Just tie them in a bunch and hang them dry. For a few days, you would start to notice that they would turn kind of like a dark green color where it feels very dry, very crunchy. For storage, I like to use a pair of scissors and roughly cut them up and place them in a glass jar and uh, keep it in the kitchen cupboard somewhere that's dark, cool and dry. And remember to work with gloves because they are still pokey even though they're dry. And I would use them for tea. Just steep it in a hot glass of water or you can powderize it in a coffee grinder and make powder to sprinkle on top of your food. And then the leftover here is mostly just a stem so I'm just going to compost them. There are so much more to pick so I'm going to continue on and pick more of these. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and find this helpful and be sure to leave me a comment down below if you have something to tell me or if you have questions and please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. And if, you're, uh, if you plan on adding more plants to your garden collection, please check out wendyland.com. I love for your support. Uh, it helps me bring more content to you guys and um, you can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram where I share more of like the things actually you know currently growing in the garden with you so thank you so much for watching and I shall see you right back here in the next video bye